Well, hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome back to channel. And I'm going to talk to you today about the T62A. Uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit about the meta of the game and why this thing keeps getting little buffs that are really important to the game, where the game is at now compared to where it was when this thing was ruling the earth, and um, why I think that uh, the buff, while fantastic, has not really done as much to change the tank as I thought it would. Anyway, watch on and I'll, I'll break all this down for you. We're also going to have a look at the armor profile. Stick around for that. Uh, and yeah, let's talk. This is the tank that was the original Unicum vehicle. Everyone worth their salt would drive platoons of this uh, and other Russian mediums like the 140 and the T-54. And this is what you drove. The heat shell on it, the armor profile, there, there has been a lot changed since this tank uh, was the king of the jungle, though. There are now multiple tanks out there at its tier that have as good or better DPM than it, uh, particularly TDs. And then there are a lot of heavies that have very similar DPM, while big hit point pools and mobility exist within them. And um, there's just, it no longer has that Viper-like, God-like DPM burn down that it had for so long in the game. Um, there are a lot of tanks out there that emulate it or outperform it in various other faculties. And there is some weird predilection within Wargaming to actually make the T-62A into a special tank. Now, I'm not saying that the buff hasn't helped it. You can see on this game in particular, there are a lot of curves and anytime you, a lot of curves. <laughs> Jesus, got a lot of curves that map. It really drives me wild. No, I'm talking about the fact that there is obviously a lot of uh, inclines and berms and hills and terrain that, you know, is basically changing in altitude, which means you need gun depression. And we'll break down why gun depression is so important in just a second. But 62A has buffed this tank a couple of, uh, Wargaming has buffed this tank a couple of times now that really have been oddball uh, buffs. The 140 didn't get the buffs. Um, and yet the 62A and the 140 have for so long been almost like sister tanks. They've been tanks that are nearly identical in terms of um, their looks, if not their performance. You can see this thing is still a very, very good knife fighter. Like, yeah, it, And I have an issue with the 62A in that I've always enjoyed the tank and I've always loved driving it. And I do more videos on this tank than I probably should because it's definitely not the king of the meta anymore. But I just love driving the 62A. I've always enjoyed it and I think it's a great vehicle and I still know how to drive the bloody tank. And I can still, even in a side that's going down, you know like gangbusters and getting absolutely flogged, I can still pump out a fair chunk of damage in it. Let's let's talk a little bit more about this though. And I want to talk specifically about the relationship between it and the 140. So Wargaming buffed it not long ago to give it a crazy gun. Like the, the gun on this thing is insane. And its aim time is so much lower than the 140s. Your aim time on the 62A without running a vertical stabilizer as your, you know, a slot of your equipment um, is better than the Object 140s while it runs a vertical stabilizer. Try that on for size. And the, and the Object 140s gun, its base is 0.317. The T62A's base gun is 0.272. And if you run it with the refined, dispersion, um, the refined gun uh, equipment option, you bring it down to 0.258. And you can do that because your aim time is already so freaking good. Your aim time is ridiculous. And now they've given it more gun depression than the 140. And it just, it baffles me as to why they are so keen to drive the 62A forward. It's obviously a storied vehicle. It's obviously a super popular tank from early in the game. And it was obviously been the king of the jungle before. But the power creep that is inherent in Blitz is just as inherent to the 140 as it is to the 62A. Let's talk about the armor profile on the 62A. It's very straightforward armor profile. Very good turret for a medium tank with some weak points around the gun where you've got to get, you know, mid 250s. But even then, they're hard places to hit. It's a rounded turret. So as it moves, um, it becomes difficult to hit that turret. Uh, the gun itself is not big mantlet-wise. If you're using heat on this, this is a T110E5's heat pen, which is 340, which is a lot of heat pen. Um, a lot of pen anyway. You can see there are weak points in the hatches and the area either side of the gun. 
the gun depression is what we're talking about here. Seven degrees of gun depression. There's the secret to gun depression really is that it's a double-edged sword. It's not just about giving the tank a better opportunity to get shots. It's also about the fact that it's almost like a secret armor buff. You can see that's seven degrees of gun depression able to hit. And with AP, that upper plate goes from being penable to just unpenable if it's shooting at the top of your turret or your tank or your hatch or it's withdrawing or rocking back and forth. It goes from a penable place to an auto bounce zone with the AP on the T1025. And that's just an example of a tank that's running uh, 258 millimeter pen AP shell. Anytime you get a gun depression tank that's utilizing that gun depression, you get a better armor profile if you're the tank that's shooting up at it. And that's just how angles work in Blitz. So the armor profile is, is not exactly a secret, not something I want to spend a lot of time on. So you've seen two games I've played so far. Now I want to show you where the real world application of this gun depression exists. Um, you can see here the line on the bottom of the reticle area there is the lowest point that your gun will point to. So that seven degrees of gun depression got me that shot. Uh, likewise, I'm here on a slight incline on the uh, the very, very edge of Yamato Harbor and you can see the lower area underneath the gun reticle is the bottom of my, you know, that's my target. And that gun depression is very much giving me that shot. I don't even have to go forward. I'm just so used to the tank needing to go forward that I go forward anyway and I get the shot easily. And I could have done that by using the gun depression. What that means is that the tank doesn't have to expose itself so often. So in effect, that extra degree of gun depression it now has on the 140 gives it an even better chance of um, survival. And it's, it's gun is better and it's aim time is better. And I, I really don't get why the 140 is just still sitting there while the 62A has the 140 plus, plus, plus. But as for buffs, this has made this into what I think is just a superb uh, medium tank at tier 10. And you can see the way I drive it is very much in keeping with the old knife fighting. Um, idea but you can drive it super passively and still be very very successful with it uh it's just such a fun tank to drive in another fashion hello are you possibly just yoloing forward um what are you doing thank you very much now i'm getting out of there because my poor amigo the uh the mouse is going to get flogged and i can't help that but you know the whole team's coming and so we're going to go high and then turn around and just lean over the top edge Get shots, back it up, back it up, back it up. Try and give me a chance to get away without taking a shot from that T62A. And that gun depression is always going to be helpful for you, right? But it doesn't always come into play. What does come into play is the mobility of the tank, the fact that it's got excellent camo, the fact that it's DPM while no longer groundbreaking is still very, very solid. Uh, I mean, not solid. It's, it's good, but, um, you know. The WZ113 now has 3.5K. The F, nearly, you know, the FV215B is in the same kind of boat. The, the, the all the TDs at tier 10 and tier 9 that have massive amounts of DPM, Yag Tigers and SU12254s and Object 263s, and these are these are all real things. Um, and the DPM has been buffed on the 50M, which also got more gun depression. And uh, like, there's there's been a lot of changes in Blitz and it's done a, a lot towards power crate, but this thing still has crazy good mobility and crazy good damage output when driven well and successfully. And this is really, while not game breaking, I think it's keeping the 62A just ahead of the, the balance curve. Let's talk a little bit about uh, that balance curve. Power creep is what we're, we're really referring to here. Uh, we all love tanks, but I mean, you're not going to grind another tank in Blitz if it's not going to be even nearly as good as the tank that you've already ground out at tier 10. So every time they introduce it, it's very, very difficult to turn it into a vehicle that is unique and makes people want to play it without just giving it something bigger and better, like more damage or a higher alpha. Have a look at the WZ113 for God's sakes. I mean, there's no accident that that thing suddenly got an alpha DPM boost. It's it's going to get played more. More people are going to grow the Chinese line. They're going to make more money from people, um, which is fair enough. It's a business. Like There has to be some kind of algorithm here that favors both sides, you know, and for all the fact that people whinge and whine and, you know, about, you know, this tank is OP and everything, you know, they still, guess what? We go and... <laughs> 
it's learned behavior on both sides. People will try to get more powerful tanks than more OP tanks because they like winning. Um, it, it's it's not like they say, you know what, I just want to do this in the worst possible tank. Um, and the 62A is is right there now, but it's not just that it's not overpowered. This The thing is the meta does not exist anymore for mediums. It's not the same meta. When the 62A was super OP, it had heat pen and heat went through everything without having any damage reduction. It had all the, the damage. It had all the armor. It had a tier 10 heavy tanks armor in a tier 10 medium tanks mobility profile with DPM that wasn't available elsewhere. And as you can see, Batman, Batman do great things here in the 62A. You can see how I really remember this tank. It's driven like this, aggressively, at the front, spotting targets, um, dealing with people one-on-one, -on -one, using very limited cover and low hit point pools, but just using mobility as a way to get around the map and, and actually be successful. This is a great drive by Batman too. God bless the Batman. I'll never forget when he got on stage at a tank fest and... Victor, the head of Wargaming, is like, who's this? And uh, and it's it's Batman, not Victor, sorry. Alex. Alex was there. She was uh, she was doing the introductions. Who's this? And we're like, this is Batman. This is, that is his name, Batman. It is not Batman. Anyway, I digress. Uh, great drive. And this is the way I remember the 62A. And it's how I play the 62A. It's how it should be played. It's a great tank. And this buff has just made it an even better tank. Is it an easy tank to drive? No, I wouldn't suggest so. It's never been an easy tank to drive, despite all reports. The amount of people I had on the videos for this thing who went and screamed at me and said, what are you talking about? I've done everything you've done, and I suck in this tank. It was one of the more uh, memorable parts of my Wall of Tanks Blitz gaming career that while I thought the 62A was just going to be a ticket to uh, a blue win rate, it, for most people, it absolutely wasn't. In fact, it was the quite the opposite. It was a tough tank to drive and it requires a lot of skill, a lot of uh, map awareness and a real knowledge of what your tank can do and the positions that it's going to be good in, which is as it should be. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Look after yourselves. I hope you enjoyed this. And as always, stay safe on the battlefield. And remember, uh, Christmas time and all that kind of thing, to subscribe, like the videos, and yeah, catch you after.